Hey, this is John. Thanks for joining me for this video today. In this video, I'm going to continue working on Mobius's Battlestar Galactica Colonial Viper kit. Um, and in the previous video, I had worked on the cockpit and kind of doing a kit introduction, adding some photo etch to the cockpit, and getting that done. In this one, I want to get the model built and hopefully the base paint on and really talk about some of the things that if you're going to build this kit, you need to be aware of in terms of the build sequence. Um, I've already built this kit one time before and went together pretty well. There's some sanding and some work you have to do with it. It's not the greatest mold in the world, but there were some things I learned in that kit in terms of the order of operations to just make the process a little easier. So hopefully in this video, I can bring that out, show that to you, and if you build the kit also, then it should make it a little easier for you, to, uh, for you to get it together without any problems. Now, a lot of the build process of getting this kit together involves accounting for sanding seam lines and painting certain details. Um, if, if, like when you build this forward part of the fuselage, there's just a big honking seam line down the front of the nose. You can try and sand the, the side smooth and get the mating surfaces as close as you can together. But in the example I built, I remember if I lined up the top, let's say this was the top up here. If I lined up the top, the, the bottom was misaligned about like that. If I got them halfway, it was about like that. So you have to look at your kit. You have to do some some things ahead of time and when you're just working on this section to make sure you get that seam filled in because um, honestly almost every uh, viper that I see somebody put online there'll be a photo that in the correct light you can see that seam line just poking through it's it can be really difficult to take care of so that's one of the things that I'm going to be looking at uh, in, in uh, examining building this kit Another thing I discovered in the first build is while putting these parts in here and into the intakes and then gluing them on seems like it's really easy. There's actually, once you get these in there, if you've already painted and detailed those and you want to keep a sharp line about how it looks, you actually have to account for that when you're putting this together and factor in how is this going to play in with later painting. So that's another one of the things I'm going to look at is this is going to be treated as a separate unit. There's also some gray stripes around here that if you're, if you're going to use the decals, those can be fairly easy to put on after the fact. But if you're going to paint those lines on, it can be much, it can be much more efficient to paint these before it's ever glued on. So I'll talk about that. The rear part of this engine is another area that needs to be accounted for because there's, there's a lot of greeblies and a lot of things going on here and you have to make the decision. Do I want to um, paint some of this and get it done before putting it all together? Do I want to bring it together? What happens if I bring it all together and then try and paint it? So that's another thing to keep in mind as you're building this and then I'll show you some various options you can, you can look at for your own build. The way the wings join to the fuselage is something else we'll look at. They've got an upper and a lower piece that has uh, a peg that goes through these holes that pop off either side of the engines. So when you put those on, uh, they have to be done. Uh, you have to glue those in generally ahead of time, and then you're going to do some painting. But that painting bring, brings on its own realities when now you're trying to get all of this done together. That'll be something I'll look at. Additionally, I'll show you a little trick that should help you with building these guns because they do have a little bit of a seam on them and there's a, there's a simple trick that you can do to not have to put these on early on where they can make it kind of difficult later on in the weathering but allow you to add these later in the build. Another area that caused me no small amount of heartburn was the join of the fuselage to the rear half of the the engines and things like that while it fit okay meaning it it did slide in there and it did slot in there where it was supposed to 
there's some areas of some pretty big gaps. But once you put these two together, I've found there's some places that you need to have painted ahead of time. There's some places that you can paint later. There's some places that you're going to paint and then blend it in. So there's going to be some realities to shake hands with in terms of joining these two together. We'll actually have the forward part of it uh, partially painted and some things going on there. And we'll have this partially painted and some things going on there. And then when they join together, there'll be some filling that has to take place. And then the majority of the painting will happen after that. Now, one of the things that's most distinctive about the Viper are the, the red stripes that are all over it. Um, there's red stripes on the wings. They run up the sides of the engine. That runs up the uh, vertical stabilizer. There's some gray stripes on it. They run down the front of the nose. On the underside, there's large areas of red stripes. So there's a lot to account for there. And I've heard a lot of complaints about the decals that come in this Mobius kit. I used them. It took a little care, but I didn't have any major problems with them. So I'm going to talk about um, using both the decals and also painting the stripes on because there's considerations uh, that you'll need to keep in mind with both. There's pluses and minuses to both. Now, my plan is because I've already done the decals, I want to do the masking this time, so I am going to do that. But later on when I get to that point. And I don't know at this point whether it's going to be in this video or the follow on to this one. But I will talk about if you're adding the decals, some things to keep in mind, some things to make it easier on you so that you won't run into any problems. Now when it comes to fitting the fuselage together, there's some things you have to watch out for. If I just put this together without any uh, preparation ahead of time, there's a pretty significant crack right there down the front of it. Uh, the underside, and it's kind of hard to see because of the sloppy priming job that I did. The underside, the fit is a little better. The alignment is a little better. So there's less of a crack, but there's more of a, a ridge, I guess you would say, between them. Now, what you have to do on this model, in fact, any Mobius model, I built the Mark I, the Mark II, and the Mark VII version of the Vipers is you have to look along this ridge here that, that the two parts fit together. There's a, on one half, there's kind of like, I guess you'd say an upper lip, and on the other half, there's a lower lip. And they go together, which makes for a, a nice join, but in that, you have to look on the surfaces that are gonna mate. I guess you'd say, the, the, if this is the lower lip and this is the upper lip, then these parts right here are the teeth. You have to look at the teeth, the, the parts that are actually going to glue together, and you have to look for burrs and uh, places that aren't smooth because that little bit of, of, uh, of imperfection in the casting can cause problems. I don't know if you can see it right there, but there's, I left this on here to show. There's like a little nub right there, and it doesn't look that significant. But when you put these two parts together, and pardon me if I get off camera and out of focus because I'm looking around the camera, but that's going to make for a little bit of a gap right up there at the front. All these places that have gaps are going to lead to poor fit along the length of this when you're trying to get that done. So it's real critical in putting the fuselage together that you go through and you, you smooth out, and I'm going to use my hobby knife and just take the blade of it and almost plane these things down a little bit. But you have to be very careful because if you take away too much, you introduce a bigger gap. So uh, looking at these, making sure, like here's a, here's a nub that I need to remove from, from when it was cut off the sprue. This has very big sprue attachments. So you have to be very careful about cleaning those up uh, really well so that it fits nicely. But all of those mating surfaces, if you get them cleaned up, then you're going to have a better time getting this to fit together. Another thing to keep in mind, one, you have to fit this nose cap in. So when you're doing your test fitting, be sure you're fitting that in there 
and making sure that its join here is going to be clean. Now, there is going to be a little bit of a panel line, so this doesn't have to be sanded smooth, but you're not going to want a large gap. You're going to want to check all the mating surfaces to make sure those are smooth and that you don't have any problems. The same way with this landing gear bay. Now, obviously, if you're going to have the gear down, you're going to need to have this part in there. But I'm not planning on having the gear down, but I did find in my last build that while you may have to sand this to get it to fit right, it gives some stability to the interior that helps out. It also makes sure that when you're putting on the landing gear doors, if they're closed, that if one of them drops through, it doesn't go rattling around the fuselage. Ask me how I know this. So getting that put in there is important. And of course, the fit of the cockpit. Now generally, the cockpit seems to fit nice. I, in test fitting this one so far, I haven't needed to do any adjustments. Um, but definitely test yours because there can always be uh, casting imperfections or little burrs along it. And you don't want those in there because you want this to get as close together as cleanly as possible to make everything else down the road work well. Because if this is fit together well, if you can get this smoothed out, then it's going to fit into that back half of the fuselage, or the air intakes rather, it's going to fit into that much better and you won't have any hassles there. One area that can cause some minor heartburn is getting this front uh, uh, wheel well roof in, I guess you'd say. While it fits pretty well, when you put it in there, as you close the other fuselage half up, it has a tendency to lift just slightly. And when it lifts, you won't be able to get the other fuselage half closed. And because you're going to have to be having the cockpit in there at the same time, it can be really difficult to get to that to make adjustments. And they've helpfully closed up the nose so there's only this tiny hole in it. So what I recommend doing, and I, I, uh, I have played with this a little bit and learned lessons from my previous build, put this in there dry. Don't glue it in. Then bring the other cockpit, the other fuselage half alongside. And when you start to snap it together, now if it just snaps in there and it fits, or you can, you can wedge it down with your finger or something, that's great. But you'll see here, it's lifted a little bit and I can't get it in there. So what I found you can do is take a long file or something like that. Something that's got some, some length to it and also some strength. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to push that piece down. And you saw that as soon as I did, the fuselage um, went together. Now, remember, we still have to put the cockpit in here, so we can't glue this together yet. But what I can do is I can run some glue along this side of it and get it glued to one side of the fuselage making sure that I don't get any in the join here, but I can get it to one side of the fuselage and then tape it together, rubber band it together, do something like that. That way it sets the angle and when you pull the two apart, this will be glued in place at the correct angle. So when you put the cockpit in and then close the other half of the fuselage around it, you won't have any problems because it's not going to be able to lift up because you've glued it in place. So that's, that's a simple little fix that will take care of getting this, um, getting this lined up. Now, just in case, even after that, you still have problems, what you can do is you can enlarge this hole there because that's going to be covered up. But there's a hole right in the front here, and you can enlarge that. And using the same kind of tool, just reach in from the front, the front and close it up. Okay, I've got the fuselage together, and... It does have a fairly significant crack, even with um, the steps that I took to try and minimize that. So I've got it glued together. I've got these rubber bands on. It's actually been sitting now for about six hours. Um, so here in uh, probably later on today, but it will probably only be a few minutes in video time, I'll go in and begin doing the steps I'm going to take to seal this up. But I want to make sure that the glue sets well. So um, I'll let that dry a little bit and uh, go back and examine it. If you're wondering, if you're wondering why this, this spray primer, uh, this is Mr. Mahogany, why it's so awful looking. When I was priming the interior, um, 
I was getting down to the bottom of the can and I was bound and determined to make that work. And right now it's not easy to go out and get primer. So I was spraying it and as it was running out, it began just splattering. So <laughs> that's why it looks like it does. Um, but it won't hurt the model a bit. But I'll go in and uh, fix that in just a little bit. But in the meantime, I'll move on to some additional steps. The next two steps will have you building the air, the intakes, um, which I, I, one time I asked somebody, I said, if it operates in space, why would you have intakes? And they said, well, that's for atmospheric use. So, okay, I'll buy that. And uh, you've got your exhausts here. Now, you've got several things going on. Let me move these aside. You've got several things going on here, and I've dry fitted this one with these intakes. The exterior is going to be the the base color, the, the 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 whitish gray, grayish white, whatever you want to call it. the The interior of the intakes is going to be the same color. There's going to be a gray stripe around the outside of the intakes. These that go inside of it are supposed to be uh, a silver metallic, however you want to interpret it, but. You know, that's, that's where the air is sucked in when it's flying through the atmosphere and not in space. So I, I want to have a fairly sharp, clean line there. But it can be kind of difficult, of course, to, you know, you could, you could wait to try and paint it and do it by hand, but I think that would be a little difficult. So what I'm going to do, and I just put that one in there to show you how it fits. It's a good fit. Um, there is a little bit of a gap there. But to me, it makes sense that, okay, this is a different thing inside of a thing, so I'm not going to fight that gap. I'm going to leave it there and just call it part of the structure. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint these off the model. And my plan is to, to paint them a black or a dark gray or something like that, and then go in and dry brush them with lead belcher, add some known oil, and maybe do another highlight to just make the detail come out. And then I'm going to paint the interior of this, the interior color. And what will happen is when I, when I assemble the model and I put this on the model and I'm painting the rest of the model, I'll actually mask these off. So they're already going to be painted the color of the exterior. So, you know, I won't have to be, I won't have to worry about the masking being perfect because if there's some that gets in there, it'll blend but it will preserve the sharp outline of these engine faces. Um, and I'll also get the chance to, if I want to, put those gray stripes on before I ever mount it on the model. And I could even, in that case, uh, mask those off. And it would be much easier to do it here than trying to do it when the model is fully assembled. And I learned that on the first one. So by getting this together first, you'll save yourself um, a few, you, well, you actually make yourself a few steps, but I think it'll give it a better appearance in the long run. Now, with the exhausts, the instructions show these that this should be a darker gray and this should be a lighter gray, this area in here. And then these should be the same color of gray as this. My plan is for this to make it easy to reach. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to paint this uh, a darker gray. I'm going to dry brush it. I'm going to do some washes in there. Um, it'll be a little easier to reach than if I put it in here first. And then I'll paint this the lighter gray that's going to be back here. And then I'll go in and I'll actually brush paint this part so that I can keep this distinct from this part. I could try and mask it, but that would be a really difficult masking job. So I think a brush paint will be just fine because I'm going to dry brush over it with lead belcher to give it a metallic look. So it's it's not going to really hurt if uh, if if the the underlying brush paint is not super smooth. Uh, the the dry brushing will cover that up. Now, if you're planning on lighting your model, of course you're not going to want to paint over these. You're going to want to put your lights behind it. Um, there are various decals that you can use over the, the rear of the engine here. 
um, to, to give it some kind of color, to give it something that, you know, will make it look lit. So keep that in mind that if you're, if you're going to light this, you want to treat these a little different, but I'm not. So I'll leave them like they are. Now for what I suppose you could call the core of the aft section, um, this actually fits together pretty good. It goes together in sort of a triangle like this. The lower part um, is going to have this longer portion forward. These little sections are going to point to the rear, so make sure you've got that oriented right. These two have slots that they fit in together like that, and then they slot into tabs on the lower section. Now, once you get this glued up, and I recommend using something like Tamiya Extra Thin or another type of welding cement, once you get it glued up, you're going to want to spend a little time adjusting each of the parts so that you minimize see how there's a little bit of a lip right there you want to adjust the fit around that so that you minimize that lip the wing will cover up some of that gap but not fully so you're going to want to make sure that you one minimize that so that it will reduce the amount of cleanup that you have uh, and two just so that it aligns well because you're going to have to get other parts to fit in there the forward part of the gap goes right there. So if you glue that well, that really won't show. And then up on the top, there, while there's a little bit of a gap, the vertical stabilizer, uh, with for lack of a better term uh, for that part, is going to cover up most of that. So the most you may have to do here is just a little bit of sanding and smoothing that over. So the, the fit on this is not bad, um, but just be aware of that when you're gluing it. There are some massive sprue connection points, so be careful when you're cutting the parts off of the, the sprue that you don't gouge the plastic, but leave a little bit on there and either shave it down with your hobby knife or sand it down with a file. Okay, I've got that section built. Uh, the way I did it was I glued this top part first and got it set, and I just gave it you know, a minute or two to let the, the Tamiya Extra Thin Cement get really sticky and let those parts set a little bit, but I didn't worry about the alignment. Then I glued them onto this lower piece. And then what I did was I held it back here and I just kind of used my thumbs to make adjustments. Now, what you end up doing is you end up having to kind of hit a happy medium because once you get this back part set, you have to turn it around and try and get the front part set fairly evenly. But of course, as you would expect, once you make some adjustments here, you turn this back around and it's not quite adjusted either. Um, so you, you just have to keep playing with it until you get to a happy medium. That little bit of um, lip that's there, the, the glue bead that's there, I can scrape that down with a knife because there, even though the fit is not perfect, the gap closes nicely. So all that's left to do is scrape off that, smooth it down. There may be the need for just a little bit of filler if there's a little bit of a, of a step there, but it's not bad. The, one that, the part that I worry about the least is this top. If there's a little more of uh, a, 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 an edge there or a lip there or something like that, I don't worry about it because that's going to be the easiest part to sand and it's going to have a fairly large part that goes over it to cover up most of it anyway. So if you're having to make compromises, I recommend making compromises along the top here and getting these edges um, lined up as close as you can. All right, here's my recommended strategy for the wings. The way the wings work is this, this lower part goes through these two pegs here go through these two holes and then you sandwich that on top of it and the wing is then in place right there like well, I don't want to mess up my glue joint but you, you can see how that would end up because this is still drying I don't want to mess with this too much now that works okay but the wings when you put them together have a fairly significant 
uh, seam line that you have to deal with. Again, the fit is good, but there's going to be, as you glue those parts together, there's going to be a seam line that has to be sanded all the way around the edge. Um, and, and that'll give you a good fit and you know it'll look good when you're painting it. So what I like to do, and I did do this on the last one and it worked out well, is I make cuts from these holes right here and now you want to test fit it really well to make sure that they slide on easily. But all I'll do then is once I get the wings cleaned up and they're nice and smooth, I could put them on here and do it, but it just makes it a little more difficult to, to handle this big unit with both wings on there. And so by gluing them together ahead of time, I can focus on each individual wing and it's much easier to handle and I can get that smoothed out and then once I'm ready this just slides on there and because I will have made whole or cut these parts out here it'll just slide on there and I can glue it and it'll be just as if I'd done it that way uh, just as if I glued it the way they suggest you do it ahead of time so it, it works uh, really well to do it that way in a similar fashion I'll do the same with the guns the guns have to go in between here um, you want to you have to sandwich them around it so the guns have a couple of holes that will fit over this so what I do is I'll just cut those out on the guns glue the guns together test fit it to make sure that it goes over this and I'll actually add them last because by not having the guns on it makes it easier when you're weathering it to get to this because this is going to be the guns are going to be right in front of that and they're fairly close to it so it can make it difficult to get to this if you want to do some painting and detailing but if you leave the guns off this is going to be much easier to get to it's going to be much easier to weather this area so it helps out in the long run all right it's time to fill this heavy duty seam along the top here uh, to show you how difficult this can be to get fully filled in if you look carefully in the instructions, you can see right there the seam line poking through. And this is on the one that's in the instructions. So it's definitely um, not an easy, easy task. However, when, I, when it comes to really filling these heavy duty seam lines, what I do is I take some Tamiya basic type putty and I thin it with nail polish remover so it flows a little better and allows me to kind of paint it on. And then I just paint it on very carefully along here. Now you can get it a little over off to either side, of course, but the more you put on, the more you have to sand off. So what I do is I get a very cheap nylon brush. I have a jar of about 50 of them that I paid probably a quarter a piece for. And, uh, when you're putting on this kind of stuff you want it to be a very cheap nylon brush because once you're done it's good for nothing else you can just throw it away at that point but let me get this mixed up and i'll put that on and show you uh what that looks like i just get some of my putty and i put a pretty good amount there in the bottom of the uh container wipe that off on the lid now this putty dries fairly quick, so you don't want to put it in there and then walk away from it for a while. Um, and you may have to make a couple of batches of it. As it dries, I sometimes make batches over the previous um, batch, I guess you'd say, because if it, if it all mixes up, that's fine. But I just get a little bit of that in there. And then I take the end of my, this is just a very cheap, 25 cent brush although for 25 cent brushes they're actually pretty good but I just make a it's almost almost a wash it's a little thicker than that and if you get too much of the uh, if you get too much of the nail thinner in there you can go in and just add some more of the putty and thicken it up but what you're wanting here is something that you can work with, paint it on, 
get it down in that seam. You really want it to fill it because this stuff will shrink up. So you have to get it in there really good and, and uh, give it time to dry. Give it time to dry also lets it shrink up and then you can go back and see if you need to apply any more. So let me get this thing cleaned up and uh, apply this to uh, the model. One thing to note, before I do any, put any filler along places like this, if there's any panel lines that cross it like that, I go in with a Tamiya scriber or a razor saw and I make them a little deeper so that when I later go in and sand, I have something to, to work with to remind me where it's at. And during the sanding process, if I start to sand it away, I stop, scribe it back in, and then continue sanding. That way when I get done, I don't have to try and figure out where did the panel line go, where did it start, where did it end, that kind of thing. It's, it's right in there. But I'm just going to take this, this mix that I've got, and I'm just going to just dab it in there. Um, and you'll see I'm not using a huge amount. I, I used to just glop this stuff on there but I found that made for a lot more sanding and it didn't help me out in the long run. So what I do is I just put this in, it's fairly thin, but I put it in, let it dry, and then just continue building it up. Now you can use Mr. Surfacer here, um, but I find that this is a little more durable than Mr. Surfacer. So um, when it shrinks down, and I sand it, I just find that it, that it tends to fill the gap better and be tougher. Um, because there have been times with Mr. Surfacer on, on a long, uh, fairly large gap like this, that when I put it in and went to sand it off, even after a few days, if it was a fairly large gap, sometimes it would tear out. It would come out. Now, if all you have is Mr. Surfacer, one thing you can do to help alleviate that, that potential problem is to um, mix in a little Tamiya Extra Thin Cement with your Mr. Surfacer. That gives it a lot more grip and, uh, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to grab it a little better and you're not going to have as much of a problem with it potentially coming out like that. It's gonna make it a better, uh, a better uh, filler. But this Tamiya Extra, this rather this uh, Tamiya Basic Putty here, I think is just a good, a good choice to have in your, in your arsenal. Now I may need to go back and add some putty to this because I think I got it just a little too thin. But once you've worked with it, um, you'll see that you can, even when it's thin like this, I could just sit here and keep building it up, although it's probably going to be faster to go and add some more putty in. But this is, this is all I do. I just add it in very carefully, trying to confine it to the place that needs to be sanded. Not, you know, I, you can put great big gobs of it if you want, that, want on there, but it just simply means you're going to have that much more sanding to do. I try to to minimize how much sanding I do because it, it damages the plastic. It means you've got a lot more chance for, you know, various scratches and things like that in it. So let me continue on doing this and I'll get this in there and the next time you see it, it'll be when I'm ready to sand it. All right, I'm continuing to apply this. I did want to make note of one thing. Um, note that I did not put this intake on the front of the model yet. Uh, that'll go in later, but it's much easier to sand this area down if you don't have this in the way. So uh, I did leave this off. And I ended up not putting any additional putty into the mix because as it as the, the nail polish remover began to evaporate, it thickened up. So I've got pretty much all that I want on there. I'm gonna let it dry for another 15 minutes or so and see if I want to add any additional in. Um, but I've got it on the top and the bottom and uh, I may add one more layer and then I'll set this aside to dry for, I, I want to give it two days, um, even though that's going to slow down making the video. I want to give this two days to dry so that any shrinking that's going to happen 
will happen and along the way. Um, I'll do a check in 24 hours and I'll be able to see any shrinkage and add some filler in where there's shrinkage. All right, while that's drying, there's still plenty to do. Um, I painted the exhausts and the air intakes and the, the interior of the, the jet exhausts with German gray. Now what I want to do is I want to go in and do some dry brushing um, on the, these parts. I'm using Citadel's Lead Belcher. Um, it's a really great color to put over black or a dark gray. Now the instructions say that these should be um, a dark gray, but I like the steely look to them. So I'm just going to use this, this uh, big makeup brush here. And I'm going to go in and I'm going to do a dry brush on those and give it some color. And then I'm going to go back later and use Citadel's Non Oil to uh, deepen the shadows and just make it look a little dirty. But you see it ends up it, it fairly well painted that, that uh, whatever you call that. And then it, it highlighted the, the raised areas on the inside of it. And when I go in and put in the wash, that's going to look pretty cool, I think. And then back here, I'll just go over it. And again, I'm, I'm not trying to make it look entirely silver, but I want it to have a metallic sheen. And so by using this, this dry brush that's very soft, I can just go over and begin putting that on there. Now, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to look silverish, but if it leaves areas that are black, I'm okay with that. Um, I'll just go in and get those edges and uh, get the faces here this way. When I go in and do this part, I'm going to go much heavier because I want there to be more contrast. So when you look in the back, you're going to see that detail. And then you'll note that I've just left the primer on here. This area is supposed to be a lighter gray. I'll go back after I do all the dry brushing on this, paint that in with, um, it's supposed to be light gray. I may just leave the primer on there. And then these details that are in there, I'm just going to pick those out, um, probably with some other metallic colors to, to kind of match what's going to be happening on the side of the engine areas on the side of the fuselage. But uh, just some quick dry brushing on this. Uh, we'll get these just about ready uh, for putting on the model. Okay, the glue has set on this engine section, so I went ahead and just smoothed out those joins right along there. And um, all I really needed was um, my, my hobby knife to just scrape down the seam and then um, before I paint it, I'll follow up with a couple of sanding sticks just to, just to get it smooth for the paint so there won't be any texture left on the model. Now, on the top, you have this tail piece that sticks up. And what I did to build that, as with everything else on the kit, the fit, in terms of the, the two parts lining up, they line up just fine. Um, but there were, on the inside, there were several pegs and holes that the pegs went in. You know, the peg was on one side, the holes were on the other. And as I test fitted it, I found that, that some of the pegs were either a little too long or that the holes actually stood up beyond the level of the tail. Meaning when you try to put it together, there would be a gap. And because the, the part aligns well enough on the exterior edges, I just went ahead and clipped off everything on the inside. I clipped, I clipped off the, the little mating pins. I clipped off the mating holes. I just smoothed those down. I left nothing on the inside of that and just glued it together and then aligned it by hand and squeezed it. Now there's still a little bit of an edge that I'm going to have to clean up all around that. But that's going to mostly be sanding, maybe a little bit of Mr. Surfacer. Um, but that's going to be an easy cleanup right there. Now for the wings, this one is not glued together, but I wanted to show that you can get a pretty good join. Now it's going to take, you can see the little bit of gap that, that's there. It's going to, just like the tailpiece, it's going to take some sanding to get rid of that gap all the way around the edge. But the way I did that, and let me show this on these other parts where it still is present, where the principal gaps were that I found were, was basically right up here in this area. 
And just like I mentioned on the tail, this, this little uh, uh, mating uh, pin here, this mating hole here, between it and the pin, and I wasn't real sure which one it was, when I put these together, it caused just a little bit of a gap there. So what I did on the wing was I clipped that pin off, because there's plenty of other alignment pins that don't cause a problem. I clipped that pin off, and I actually clipped this off and just sanded that completely flat, because it, it doesn't need to be there. Um, so, and then, and then, as I test fitted, I just looked for other areas that might need to be shaved down. Like if you notice on this, this connecting hole right here, there's just a little bit of casting imperfection, a little bit of plastic sticking up. That'll need to be sanded down. So I, I just clipped those off on the inside. And the other important part, and I hope this will show up on camera. Let me twist it around. You see there's kind of a, a little ridge there. Um, just just a little casting mark. I sanded that down. I, well, I started off with my, my hobby knife and I shaved it down a little bit and then I sanded it flat. Now you have to be sure to keep that flat because if you don't, you're, you're going you're gonna to introduce more of a gap right up here. But once you do all of that, you get a pretty good fit like I did here. Now the other thing I did was I clipped off these two little pegs here. The way this is supposed to work is those clip through there and then you sandwich the laser around it. But if you do that, that means the laser's got to be in place. Um, it makes painting a little harder when you get to that part of the fuselage. So I wanted to just be able to put the laser on over that. I went ahead and assembled the lasers, cleaned up um, the, the cast, the, the, the seam lines, this is the one that I haven't cleaned up. I've got the other one uh, sitting somewhere over here in the box. <laughs> but what this will allow me to do now is, because those pegs are gone, I can just take this gun when I'm ready to put it on there and it just slides right over it. So I can put that on towards the end. Which made me think, I can do the same thing on the wing. Because you're supposed to sandwich the wing around this part of the, the engine area, but I realized if I just clip it like that to make sure there's plenty of room for me to put this on, later in the build I can just slide this right on there. And by clipping it at this angle like that, it makes sure when I push it back, it's set exactly where it's supposed to be, but I don't have to worry about getting it fitted just right. There's plenty of room so that when I start it, it's going to go right in there. And if you look at the way it is on the interior, that's how it's going to go in there. So it's kind of self-setting. You don't have to worry too much about, you know, is it going to go in too far? Is it going to be forward or aft or whatever? It's going to go in there just right by clipping that off. So now I've got the ability to build this thing and put the wings in there. Like when I'm masking for the stripes, I'll be able to put the wings on, mask everything off for the stripes so it all lines up, and then pull the wing back off for the painting. So that's going to make things a lot easier. I wish when I built this the first time I would have um, taken that step. So uh, there's a lot going on with the wings and the tails, but if you just do some sanding around the edges, do some, uh, some clipping like I suggest, it should make assembly a whole lot easier. Another area to be aware of in your preparation is how the canopy interacts with the fuselage and the air intakes. Now I've just got everything held together, but this is going to go in here and it's going to fit fairly well. The canopy, although you're going to have to really hold it in there to get it to glue, and then you got to deal with this part down here, but that's all just part of the process. This slides back over the seat and then slots down in here. Now, you're going to mask off the canopy, I'm going to mask off the canopy, and I'm going to paint it uh, the dark color of the interior before putting the exterior color over it. However, there is going to be some of the air intake in this area behind the seat that's going to show. Now, you can just paint that all black, and so it's not real visible when people take a look at it. 
But what I'm going to do, because I don't want it to just appear as just kind of a, a hollow uh, gap back into nothing, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of this sheet plastic and I'm going to put the end of the canopy right there and I'm going to, if I can hold it in place, I'm going to draw trace around the edges of it to get me some lines to cut on. I'm going to cut this out. Now because I did it on the exterior it's going to be bigger but I'll just shave off a little on the sides and the bottom and when I get it shaped right I'm going to put it in so that it fits just behind the seat here. So at the just behind the seat there will be a nice just stop. It won't, it won't go back into nothingness and then nothing else will be seen because the rest of this will be painted. So um, that's, that's a little something that, that uh, you can do to, uh, to, to close that off. Now, if you don't want to do this step, and you don't want to glue that in there, then simply just paint everything around this edge black. And then on the intake here, this lower part of it where the canopy is going to fit into it, you want to paint that black. And then when you put it all together, it won't appear, you won't have this, this color of the intake shining through and you won't have this plastic shining through. All right, you can see that I've got that little piece of plastic in there. And what you have to make sure that you do is that it's just aft of this lip here because that's going to fit down in there. And if you have it just aft of that, then it's going to give you a perfect fit right behind the, uh, the seat backing. Now, the way they normally would have you do this is you would slide the fuselage into here and then put the canopy on. But because this is going to prevent you from putting that over there to, to get that over the seat, all you'll need to do is when you're ready to put it all together, what I plan to do is to dry fit the canopy and then push it here. And if it slides in, fine. But if, if it doesn't slide in, then by having it dry fit, I can lift the back of the canopy up just to get it to pop over that lip. And then I'll be able to glue that together. And I don't have to worry about the seam line between the air intake and the back of the fuselage because this part will cover it up. And I'm just going to brush paint that. I'm just going to put on a good amount of black paint um, basically from here back because that doesn't need to be particularly neat. Um, and uh, I just want to make sure that when, it, when somebody looks in, it's just pure black. So that takes care of that little issue. All right, now it's time for the sanding. Um, this is a major portion of the work on the model, so I'm going to just talk about it a little bit, show just a little, and then I'm going to do most of it off camera because you don't want to see me do this. But what I'm starting off with is I'm just grabbing one of my old uh, 180 grit sanding sticks, and that's a pretty aggressive grit. But I'm going to reach off camera here, and I'm going to dip this guy in water. Wet sanding is going to be much more productive. And the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to do it in more of a circular motion and on camera because what I'm wanting to do this is a raised flat area so that makes it a little easier now I'm not necessarily wanting to completely sand away all of that gray what I want is I want it to feel smooth by wet sanding I get much better performance from the sanding stick and uh, and the, the grit that's actually coming up in the water actually helps to sand it. You'll get much smoother results with wet sanding 180 grit than you will dry sanding. Now I'll still go back and clean this up with probably all the way up to 600 grit. But I'm just going to work it slowly, checking it every now and then to make sure I'm not introducing any, um, any shapes that I don't want or any gouges or anything like that. Because I've already been working on the underside so that I could show it. The underside doesn't look visually all that good, but if I run my finger across it using my fingernail, your fingernail is going to pick up, uh, you know, edges and uh, you know, 
things that aren't quite smooth. When you run your fingernail across that, it's completely smooth. Now I'll still, before I prime the model for the final priming, prior to paint, I'll go in with some primer and just prime these things right here so that it will help me see if there's any problems. If there are any little pinholes or gaps that are left, I'm just going to use super glue to fill those because that'll be a much faster process. Um, but I could have used it from the beginning, but it is so hard to sand that stuff down that I didn't want to do that along the whole of it here, um, but rather use the putty. So I'm just going to continue sanding this down all the way back here. And then you have to treat this very careful because you don't want to miss, you don't want to get the forward part of the canopy or the canopy joins sanded down too far or otherwise you won't get a good fit of the canopy because the canopy actually fits really good. So this area, I'm probably going to start with uh, 180 or even 240 grit so that it's a little less aggressive to make sure that I get just the right amount of sanding there to allow it to be smooth but still fit the canopy well. So it's going to take some elbow grease but when it's done hopefully um, I shouldn't have any problems and because I've given this I've actually given this three days to dry so hopefully there shouldn't be any more shrinkage and it should look pretty good in the final analysis. Okay, I realized at some point I'm going to have to draw this thing to a close. Um, so here it is. Uh, you see it primed and it's all dry fitted. Nothing is, is glued in in terms of the major components. Um, and you'll notice I ran out of primer here. Uh, but in order to keep up with my, I guess you'd call it my production schedule, uh, I'll go back in and fill that in before I do the main painting when I start working on the next episode of this video, which is going to be in a few weeks. Okay, just some notes. Um, everything, you know, that, that I showed you that I built, I went and primed it. It's primed with Mr. Surfacer 1000, um, thinned with uh, Mr. Color Leveling Thinner, and I just sprayed that on. The seam along the top of the nose is very good. There's one pinhole right there that I'm going to have to go back and fill in. Um, I'm not sure how that happened. On the bottom, there's a similar kind of pinhole. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm not going to actually fill it in right now. I'm going to give it uh, another... Uh, actually, I'm going to, it'll, it, it will sit until I start filming the next episode for about two or three weeks. And I'm going to give it some time to let any shrinkage that may occur, I'm going to let that occur. I don't think at this point there will be any, but... I want to make sure because I want that to be a good, good seam along there, a good closed seam. But uh, everything is is dry fitted. Uh, the wings are dry fitted on. They're not glued on. The guns aren't glued on. The these parts aren't glued on. This is not glued on. Like I said, I painted this. I masked off the canopy with masking fluid and painted this black so that it will match the interior color. And then later on, I'll go back and prime over it with the same primer. Um, that I used on the rest of the model when I touch this up. That way when I start painting, it will be the same base as everything else. But the idea of this now is that I'll be able to do um, the, the, the base painting. Let me pull this guy apart so you can see. I'll be able to do the base painting in these components with the wings off, and like that, which is going to make it a lot easier. I can even pull this off if I want to. I'm probably going to leave this off to do the striping. Um, I've got several methods in mind for how I'm going to do that, but I'm not sure if I'm going to stick to that. But um, that'll be for the, the next episode. But this, and I can pull this off. So this is going to make things real easy to paint. The only real seam that I'll have to worry about is on the underside where this joins to this. Um, it's not a great seam. It's not a great uh, place for a join. My thinking right now, which is what I did on the last model, is I may just leave it. Stain the heck out of it, hide it, disguise it, but not worry about it. Um, I, I may change on that. But I think you've seen through this video let me, let me rephrase that. 
I hope you've seen through this video that getting this thing assembled is not difficult. It's time consuming. Um, there's some simple steps to pay attention to, some, some orders of operation that I think will make it helpful. But I hope as you've watched this that you haven't come away thinking that is way too much trouble for building a model. Because this really is a cool looking uh, model. It's big in size. I mean, you see this thing has to be uh, close to a foot long, if not longer. Um, so it's, it's, it's a big, impressive model. There's plenty of room for um, staining and weathering. And I, I mean, I'm just, I'm looking forward to weathering this thing. I'm going to have a, I'm going to go to town on it um, and really just have a good time with it. So I do think it's a model that's worth building. It just takes a little time um, paying attention to some details and then just really sitting back and thinking, what, what I like to do is try and think three or four steps ahead. You know, if I do this now, how's that going to play out in the painting? How's that going to play out in the decals? How's that going to play out in the weathering? And try and do things in a way that will be logical for each of those steps. So anyway, thank you very much for watching uh, up to this point. Uh, if you're still here and hanging in there, I am so thankful for you for doing so. But I hope this has helped you out if you plan to build this model. Um, that that you'll, you, I've heard a few people tell me they get frustrated building this thing. But I think if you follow these steps, it will greatly reduce your frustration because really all you're talking about is sanding. That's, that's, that's almost all of this. It's just a well, little clipping of things, you know, like the little wing inlets here. Just clipping those, sanding, gluing carefully, paying attention to detail. Um, other than that, it's a great kit. Well, again, thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already done so, I would appreciate if you would click down here to the subscribe button um, and uh, hit the little bell icon so you'll know when I have new videos coming out. I would be most grateful for that. Down below, there are, so, there are also <laughs> links uh, in the description to the various social media platforms that I'm on and to uh, uh, my blog. There's also a link down there to Patreon, and I would be most grateful if you would take a look at the, the rewards that I offer there for patrons. And uh, if you are inclined to do so and able to do so, I would be most grateful for your support on Patreon. And if you're already a Patreon supporter, thank you so much uh, for, for doing so, because this is what that's your support is what makes it possible for me to build at the pace I do with the materials I do um, and get everything paid for and uh, and and you know otherwise our family wouldn't be able to afford for me to do the things that I do again at the pace I do so thank you very much and as always I'll leave you with a final thought in this hobby if you're not having fun you're doing it wrong happy day to you friends bye bye